Mechanics of BiPAP. In severe COPD, the patient is suffering from hyperinflation of the lungs, which compromises their respiratory muscles, placing them at a huge disadvantage. Due to the changes in lung elasticity and compliance, they can quickly head towards ventilatory failure. This then can lead to an acidosis, which further compromises ventilatory muscle function. They are then in a downward spiral. Initially, this type of patient is managed with a therapy which aims to facilitate oxygenation and treat the cause of the exacerbation. This will include bronchodilators, corticosteroids, antibiotics and oxygen. In the past, patients have gone on to need invasive mechanical ventilation, but whilst this has corrected the acidemia, it proved hard to wean them from the ventilator, prolonging their stay in ITU and increasing their mortality. So let's first understand what happens during normal, spontaneous, unassisted breathing. Here we have a curve which shows the pressure in the alveoli compared to atmospheric pressure over time. During inspiration, the diaphragm descends, dropping the intraalveolar pressure. Whenever intraalveolar pressure is lower than atmospheric pressure, the gradient drives air into the lungs. Then, as the diaphragm relaxes, the intraalveolar pressure increases above atmospheric pressure, driving air out of the lungs. In BiPAP, the patient triggers an inspiration by a sudden downward deflection in the airway pressure. When the machine senses this, it delivers positive pressure equal to the IPAP. Airflow increases into the alveoli, and as it reaches the IPAP set, then flow will drop. Expiration may be triggered by the machine sensing that the IPAP threshold has been reached, by the passage of a preset time, or by the patient voluntary control. The patient will breathe out until the pressure in the alveoli is the same as the EPAP setting. This maintains recruitment of the alveoli, thereby improving oxygenation. The greater the difference between IPAP and EPAP, the greater the patient's tidal volumes. This difference is equal to the pressure support used on invasive ventilation. These greater tidal volumes will help the patient to clear their carbon dioxide, and so their hypercapnia will improve, as will their respiratory acidemia. Advantages. It can be applied for short, intermittent periods. There's no need for sedation, avoiding any of those side effects. It reduces the risk of the need for ventilation. There were some worries in the past that the implementation of NIV would just lead to an unnecessary and risky delay in mechanical ventilation. Studies have shown that this is not the case. The patient can continue to eat and drink and communicate. They can be involved in decisions about their care. The incidence of nosocomial pneumonia is reduced. There's possibly a reduced length of hospital stay. There's significantly reduced incidence of mortality. Contraindications to BiPAP. High risk for aspiration. Severe upper GI bleed. Inability to cooperate or protect the airway inability to clear secretions, upper airway obstruction, facial trauma or deformity.